I remember last year, Jimbo Fisher with Florida State, they opened up and DeAndre Francois got hurt. But Bama only beat him 21 to 3 or 7 or 24 to 7. I can't remember. Something like that. Wasn't a big blowout. And then we found out Florida State sucked later in the year, right? And then we're like, and, that, and then now you see DeAndre Francois back with this team. Well, some of the the guys anyway, and they still suck. So you wonder if that was all Jimbo Fisher's, Fisher's coaching here. So that would don't be, I guess that would be the only thing I'd be, concern, be concerned about. But then you see Alabama take Ole Miss, and Ole Miss, you know, they beat Texas Tech. They they're they're high flying, and and they just got their asses kicked. I mean, they got the uh, people that bet the over missed it by two points at seventy one because Ole Miss can only put up seven points. <laughs> yeah, I know a couple of people actually that yeah took that over and they were they were mad because the Ole Miss could only put up seven. And like I said, this isn't Bama's best defense. You know they've had in their ten years or whatever dynasty. But I mean, I think these they're really young. Their defense is very young, and they want to prove a point. But like you said with A&M and Jimbo, Jimbo, I mean, he knows how to coach quarterbacks. And the kid they got for a is pretty good, but I still think he's not going to show out too much against Bama. You know, maybe a good way to bet Bama is like what like what we do. When the, when the lines come out on Sunday, we hit them, right? You know, no matter what, the Alabama line's going up, right? It's going up. Maybe you put... For example, two units on Bama just blind. Doesn't freaking matter, right? Then when it goes up past a key number, let's say it's a 24 or a 28, you buy back for half, and you might find a six-point middle there. Meaning you're probably going to win the Bama side anyway if they're going to cover. Um, you're, you're less exposed if they don't by buying back, and you have a good you know window there. So that's just an idea about how our listeners could <laughs> attack a team like Bama. If they love Bama, if they love watching Bama games, hell, why not? So that's not a bad way to attack this one. Yeah, even on the Texas game, too, Texas TCU, like I said, you know, we took it at minus three, uh, the early line. And also for our listeners, you know, early uh, line value, it really does help in the long run. It really, really does. If you do it like us, you know, it's not a – it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So always try to shop around and get the best numbers early as you can. Just pay attention to to the uh, percentages of what the public's on and all that and just, you know, just keep up with it. And you could also, you know, if that TCU gets to minus five and a half, minus six, you could possibly, you know, buy back a little on Texas as well and try to hit a middle with that on a couple points. Yeah, if it gets to six and a half, it might be worth doing. Um, power ratings wise says Texas, you know, te- it, like you said, between – Around three, four, five points depends depends which one you're looking at. But you know, I I think TCU has a kind of a get up spot, and Texas kind of has a letdown spot after beating USC. So um, I think you factor that in. Who knows? Yeah, I think TCU's going to come out pissed after that Ohio, after they blew it against Ohio State. So yeah, I I think yeah they're going to come in with a bunch of momentum. You know, it's only a Two hour, two and a half hour drive too. So right down thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Not too far at all. Well, that's cool, my man. So anything else you want to discuss? I know that uh, LSU. You're you've always been a a fan of LSU, and they've sure as hell uh, went above expectations this year. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Also. Yeah. I even though I'm down here in Texas, I've always have been a big time LSU Tiger fan. Uh, but I did take the over seven and a half win total also. Um, at the beginning of the season. Um, but one of the things I did like about this Tiger team coming into the season was, uh, you know, no one gave them a chance. No one gave Coach O a chance. You know, everyone already marked them out. So they came into the season with, you know, no pressure. You know, pressure's on Miami, you know, week one. They blew Miami out. You know, they had a sleeper. I don't even know who they played week two in northeastern Louisiana, one of those weak SEC scheduling. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then week three, you know, uh, this past Saturday, you know, they come off that one point win against Auburn, which was huge. And I mean, this team, they have one of the best defenses in the country, if not the best. And they have a very young receiving core and they might have got a quarterback. I mean, I know he's only 40, 50 percent on uh, his completion rating, com- completion rating. But uh, that's because he's taking chances. He's taking long shots, you know, and he we just need someone in there to uh 
They just need someone in there to uh, uh, just slow the game down, you know, take their time, don't turn the ball over. Just need someone to be mediocre. And he's done that so far, so they've really impressed me this year. And, I mean, you might know a little bit about Joe Burrow since he came from Ohio State. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, what's funny is, like, everyone's saying, oh, Ohio State didn't want him, so he's not going to be good. If Ohio State doesn't want a quarterback, that probably means he's a top 10 quarterback instead of a top 5 quarterback. You know, I mean, it, quarterbacks sometimes, they get bunched up in places. You see it happening right now in Georgia. You know, and they're like, wait a Alabama, minute. Alabama, too. Alabama. Well, it happened in Washington, and that's why, I forgot his name, he's starting Colorado State. It, it, they're like... You know, it, they decide like you know, one of them's got to leave because they might kick some ass somewhere else. Greer was in Florida, you know. Now he's now he's playing for West Virginia. So it, th- that was a great move for LSU to to scoop him up. And so yeah, absolutely. He and plus he seems like a very you know rah rah get these guys up to play type you know leader. You know, and that's exactly what what Coach Orgeron needed. And so, great move for them. We were both on LSU last week, and, man, that was a fun Yeah, money game. line even. I was sweating it out a little bit because all, all the other podcasts I listened to, some of the sharps I... You know, oh, so, everybody was taking was, Auburn and was, the points. They were, they were calling it a trap. They're they're they calling it a trap. LSU was the public dog, you know. It was it was just you know I was just like I don't know, man. They they, they seem pretty poised, and I uh, I didn't fade off of it, and and I was really happy what happened there, you know. So um, yeah, but one thing that does scare me with them, um, they have one of the toughest schedules still to come. Uh, this weekend they play Louisiana Tech. Uh, they should handle business against them, but then after that they hit the gauntlet. That's when you're really gonna find out. Hopefully they're not due for regression, but I wouldn't be uh, looking to uh, you know lay too much or too many points with them coming up. You know they got to head to Florida, they got to play Mississippi State, they got to play Georgia, they got to play Bama. So it's it's a tough road from here. You know that Louisiana Tech line, I was looking at them because I was really thinking about you know the letdown spot after beating Auburn. It went up, it went below twenty one. So other sharp betters were on the letdown spot. I'm thinking I'm not going to touch that right now. I, I, unless it gets back above 21 and a half, 22, which it probably will. I wouldn't put much on that. Um, it, it's just, that's not a big, you know, normally a letdown spot. You're looking at a team like Louisiana tech should be 28 points or something like that. Not, not like 21 or 22. I'll just use a top, top 12. Yeah. That's a now. fishy number. Right. When I saw that number, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. my numbers didn't have it close to that. So I'm yeah definitely staying away from that game. I feel like it is a trap game because Louisiana Tech, you know that they, they can't wait to play these guys. You know, in state, uh, you know, Big Brother school, you know, and Louisiana Tech got some athletes. So oh yeah, they 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 beat, blew out Southern U fifty four to seventeen. They beat South Alabama, which South Alabama is usually decent thirty to twenty six. They're two and zero, and they circle this game of course. And you know they, these are the kids that couldn't make it to LSU and I, they, they have a chip on their shoulder, you know? And so the line represents that. That's why it's not 28. And, you know, if it was 28, I might be like, all right, here, you know, let's, let's get the let down. But no, this is not a betting line right now. So I absolutely agree with you, my man. Well, yeah, because you can't be scared, you know, these first uh, couple weeks, you know, to lay a big number. But like, you know, with Alabama last week, minus 21, a bunch of people are telling me, Oh man, that's a lot for right now. That I was like, man, I don't think so. This and that, because you know, a lot of these spreads are high numbers, and some people might back away off these high numbers. But I mean, some of these teams will cover those really big numbers. But yeah, rise like you said, it's twenty, twenty-one. Uh, my numbers had at least yeah, twenty-seven. So yeah, yeah. All right, my man. Well, that's about all the time we have. It was great having you back, Eddie. If anybody needs uh, or wants to talk to Eddie or get any of his premium picks, which you've been freaking killing it at, please tweet Eddie at Eddie has winners and he will hook you up with his plays. Do you have any specials for our listeners? Yeah, I got a, I got a package, uh, three plays for uh, 20 bucks. So that's what I got right now. Awesome, my man. Well, if you guys, if you heard that, please tweet him at Eddie has winners, my man. Thanks a lot, Eddie, for being on. Really appreciate it. We'll be tweeting back and forth. Enjoy the games this weekend. Thanks for having me.
All right, and let's get into the NFL Week 3. We have a very special handicapper, Mr. Doug Upstone here, the owner and lead handicapper at Vegas Pro Insiders Daily. He's number one in 2018 there, currently number two in just college football right now, doing awesome. Uh, unfortunately, our recording got a little corrupted with Doug. Um, we were able to save most of it, but I'll get you guys caught up. If you need to tweet Doug, please tweet him at Vegas Pro Insider, or you can easily find him on YouTube. So I'll get started and caught up right now. First, we're going to cover New Orleans versus Atlanta. Atlanta's favored by three. Atlanta's a little banged up, but they did have a pretty impressive performance against Carolina. On the other hand, people are really questioning the Saints for their game versus Tampa and Cleveland. I'm forgiving them for this, okay? Week one, nobody saw Fitzmagic coming in like this and dominating. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that uh, I, th- I I don't think the Saints saw it coming either. They they kind of they they kind of didn't expect a lot out of this team. And week two against Cleveland was kind of a look ahead spot to Atlanta, in my opinion. Even after a tough start, the Saints are still top five in passing this year and a solid six point two yards per play. The Saints may have beaten the Bucks week one if they had an extra quarter. They were really kind of starting to come back, but. Uh, you know, I like Breeze's comeback abilities and the wide receiver matchups versus Atlanta's in, injured secondary. I really like that as well. So um, I like fading Steve Sarkeesian. And I am taking New Orleans plus three. Actually, Doug agrees with me. He thinks Atlanta's going to win by one point here. So uh, that was his side of this game. The next game we talked about was New England versus Detroit. Uh, Detroit is getting seven points. Um, Okay, so this one makes sense to me. But fair warning that making sense doesn't seem to go right in the NFL. Uh, Lions coach Matt Patricia is off to a terrible start, right? Just terrible. 0-2, blew a game to the Jets at home, lost to the 49ers came back and um and kind of garbage time well that's what matt, matt stafford is is garbage time you know he scores at the end now <laughs> really great for fantasy actually they're coming home and they're desperate for a win okay very desperate and now guess who they have to face the patriots matt patricia has been with the patriots though for 14 years before this year as a defensive coordinator for most of those years and there is no other coach that knows this Patriot team more than Matt Patricia, okay? The Lions have been struggling a bit, and I blame lots of this to no running game. And at the same time, New England is in the bottom half against the run themselves here, so maybe it's not going to affect them as much. The Lions do give up a lot on the ground at five point yards per run, Uh, Second worst in the NFL, but the Patriots are not a good rushing team either. They're not. Uh, The the Pats are a passing team. And the Lions are actually third in the league at eight total quarterback sacks. Third. I like that, playing the Patriots. As bad as the Lions are, they still average 5.5 yards per play, and the Patriots only average 5.2. Now, we've been burned over the years, bet against the Patriots, but something's missing on this team. And I think Matt Patricia is smart enough to have a safety over Gronk as well as, um, you know, obviously take Hogan out of the picture. That's really their only two pass catchers here. The rest are not that good. And I don't think Josh Gordon's going to be ready for this game either. I don't see Bill Belichick running up the score against his best friend, Matt Patricia. Well, that's if Belichick actually has any friends. But if he has any friends, it's probably Matt Patricia because he's been together for 14 years. So even if this game almost can get out of hand, Belichick's not going to run up the score and embarrass him. I don't think he will. So um, 
I'm liking the Lions plus seven and even a little money line sprinkle here. Now, in the past, I know, and Doug made this point, 